Let's just pray and look to the person of the Holy Spirit <laughs> to to draw us into this relationship in ways that really we need we need the Lord to help us. So Lord, we just thank you for um, all that you have blessed us with of of being more sensitized to you, the person, being more um, attuned to your heart, to your needs, to things that would make our relationship with you um, so much more fulfilling and in the eternal mission of, of bringing forth a bride for the son after his kind, for his heart and, and for the world to truly seek him in his nature, in his, in his being. Um, we're just so blessed to say that we are blind in so many ways. We don't see, we don't understand. We thank you that you've given us the eyes of the dove. You've given us his ears and his heart because he sees. He sees Jesus. He hears the heart of Jesus and the Father. He knows so, Lord, we, we're not looking to ourselves. We are looking to him. And therefore, we want to cultivate a relationship that can be very close to him and not grieve him. So help us today, Lord, and the rest of our lives to cultivate this relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing that I, I, I'd just like to speak more from my personal experience because it, sometimes that's more from the heart to the heart. And um, being that this class really is more of a relational type class, um, you know, that we have this most blessed book that is so, so very thorough and in the area of giving us the seeds that can draw our hearts to know the Spirit and search of the scriptures in that pursuit. But, um, you know, I just, I think that an enemy to particularly with God, and, and this is all coming from my own personal, very short, very young experience. But, um, uh, and you know, it's so, it'd be so much nicer just to be sitting on the grass and me being on like a lower portion of the grass <laughs> than in a chair in the front. <laughs> I know it's just for classroom, but in, in my heart, I'm lower and needy, you know, and not not someone that wants to be looked up to as if I know something, but just a person sharing my experience um, and my need, and hopefully that will draw your heart to him, to Jesus and to the Spirit. But with the Lord, because he is so big, and big is just such a simple child word, isn't it? If you look that word up in a thesaurus, a dictionary, it's going to be a one-dimensional type thing. There's not a lot of nuance on big. But God is big in his nuance, in his essence, in his spirit, in his person, in his eternal I amness. He's big. And it's going to take endless ages to begin to know him. And, um, and of course, this person, this third person of the Godhead, but this person called the Holy Spirit knows him. They're one. And he's been given to us. And um, that is just something else. Because he can take us into knowing this Jesus that is our life, our husband, our eternal groom. Okay, so, but we're talking relationship now, not this is this great big God and he's so vast and we need, you know, we're talking, we're wanting to build a bridge from knowing something about the Holy Spirit to actually having a relationship with his person on a daily, momently level. And one of the things that's very difficult for Adam, for human, for man or woman or child, is deep, 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 deep inside of our mechanism, the mechanism of our being, believing that we don't know it all. It's just tough. It's, it's, uh, it's part of the fall that broke us really bad, really bad. Pride, pride. 
It's not just what we have. I have a problem with pride. It's what we are. It is the nature of sin that we have fallen into. And the only redemption from it is death to it and another life called Christ. So we're stuck pretty deep in this muck and mire. Not just of uh, we're going to hell because we, we sinned. But every single moment we have this huge enemy that's called us in the inner mechanism of how we function before Christ is formed in us. That is the biggest preventative wall. It's like a firewall that keeps the Holy Spirit out. It just does. It keeps the leadership out. It keeps the word of God revealed out. Because we feel deep, deep, deep inside like we know more. We really do. And I, I felt it at times where I was broken before the Lord, deeply broken in my heart of hearts, just weeping. But I, I looked a little deeper in, and I saw that mechanism still clicking away. I, but, I, but I know that I know more. But I know that you know what I'm talking about. But I know that they're idiots, or God, I, this area, I'm, I'm still one up, right? It's a broken thing in us. And it's an enemy to Christ crucified because we don't know nothing about that Jesus. Nothing. And when we start to know him in the power of the Holy Spirit, we still have to have the I know nothing tenor. Or the second we get our first little crumb from the table of God, we rise up like kings and push Jesus off the throne and forget the process ever continuing Pastor Crumb because we have risen to such a place of knowledge <laughs> there's no more hope of relationship and that pride takes that throne and begins to build bigger firewalls against the Holy Spirit entering in with more of who that real Jesus that I can't see and ear can't hear and heart can't we don't have a hope in heck of knowing him. Guys, we don't have a hope of knowing. Do you understand that we don't have any hope of knowing the Jesus that we don't know yet? Do you know that? There's nothing in us but the Holy Spirit. With our born-again, regenerated spirit, there's nothing we have. We are completely reliant upon him. But that broken thing in us goes, but no, I got, I got aces up my sleeve. I got hidden strengths. I'm deep, and I'm intuitive, I'm sensitive, I'm, you're dead, man. You're dead to that knowledge. You're, you're a perversion of that knowledge. I mean, you distort it, you contaminate it, you defile it, you don't know it. Well, why the heck does God have to get so hard on us sometimes? Do you ever wonder that? Man, the Lord chastises those he loves because we're so broken, that if he doesn't awaken us to what it really is, we just let egg, egg live. We let him live and take over the whole temple, kingdom, like leaven. So he's got to wake us up that there's enemies, enemies of the relationship that we need to cultivate with the person of the Holy Spirit so we can know Jesus. I, I want to say lads because I get that feel when I'm just talking to family because the Irish are my family in, in the Lord in a special way, and you guys are too. We're going to miss it. We can sit at the feet of the Apostle Paul. We can sit at the feet of Mother Teresa. We can sit at the feet of John. We can sit at the feet of... Some blessed brother or sister who's just so full of Jesus that you can smell him a mile coming, right? I mean, but we'll miss it all if this broken thing in us stays broken. Just It just wastes opportunities to know him. And you know, this may not be where God's dealing with you. You can't even see this area unless God in his loving father heart 
begins to awaken you to this. But if that's for the future or if that's for the now in each individual, you'll know. You'll know because you have a relationship with God. And you'll know in your knower, in your heart. But if this thing stays broken and these firewalls get stronger and this hidden man of perdition keeps usurping the throne with his own I know it more, we just miss so many opportunities to be conformed to his image, to enter in behind the veil. Now, when you want to know the Lord like this, when you want to enter in like this, uh, you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to fight for it. There are a lot of enemies that don't want us to have this kind of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And Joseph knows there's a lot of enemies. I mean, just because he's been around the message of the cross for 20 years, there's a lot of enemies that are going to fight in internal enemies and external enemies. But today, we're <laughs> external enemies are bred because we lay our lives down. But the internal ones are the ones that are scary to me. These guys in me, they're the ones that scare me, right? Everything else, <laughs> no problem. I mean, God bless you. I probably need the Lord more than you. I know. I know I do. These internal ones. And they don't always first show up maybe towards the lamb because we don't even know the lamb yet in, that, in the way that the Spirit wants to show us. So they show up to the person of the Holy Spirit, the first relationship that takes us in. And how do they show up? Well, he's a dove, right? So what does that mean, that he's a dove? He's, he's just not going to press the point. The minute the know-it-all thing, the I see, the, I, the pride, the whatever, that broken thing is of the flesh, starts to, you know, press its view or rise up, he just flies away. I mean, he, or he says, well, how would you like me to serve you? I mean, he's just, just like Jesus. They're the same nature. What would you like? Well, okay, let's not talk about Christ Cruz. Let's not talk about the cross like that then. You've got that figured out. Okay. Well, you know, but he does. He'll do this. He will do this. You've got that figured out. What would you like to talk about? Healings or miracles or no, you, want, you want me to inspire you over that? What was that you were talking? Okay. I, I'll use that. What hoop would you like me to jump through? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. But he will because he's as much of the lamb as Jesus. He, he's that God. He's that much God. So much so that you won't even know he's doing it. He's so good at it. He's over 2,000 years doing this with people, humans. He's so good at it. You won't even have a clue. You won't even have a clue that he just like totally bowed down, took the lower seat, and just made himself, took off his towel and his washing feet. You, you have no clue the Holy Spirit's doing it because he's so, so good at it, so selfless, so totally right in his spirit. There is no sense of, boy, you really missed something I had special for you. You know, you can, we always carry a little, until Christ is fully formed, which is probably not in this life, but let it be, Lord. But there's just a little hint of, well, you really, boy, did I have something special. You really missed it. You know, we, want, we have to release something just to get our soul a little gratitude vacation. He releases nothing. There's no whisper or tremor in the spirit that you just blew it, buddy. You just grieved him. He's gone. He's, he's back down to your level doing what you want him to do. You, there's no clue. I'm talking about my own personal experience with the Holy Spirit. Remember, I'm not talking doctrine. I'm talking what I've experienced and am experiencing in my own need for hit, my heart to continue to be cultivated and sensitized and made right by love. So there's no clue from him that we missed it. Well, what, what does that mean to us? We got to sensitize ourselves because he ain't going to do it. Not, he, he will sensitize us to Jesus. Like if we're going to grieve the Lord, he will sensitize us because he doesn't speak of himself, but he will speak of Christ. So he'll give us a clue on that front. He'll, he'll sense his grief that we 
did not forgive somebody and in so doing, you know, abused the body of Jesus, you know, because he, he'll lift up Christ continually without shame, without, you know, holding back. But he won't lift up himself. He won't lift up himself. He won't declare himself. It's not the nature of God. So, so that kind of leaves us in a little bit of a shaky, you know. Have you ever been with someone that was so conformed to the image of Christ that you never knew what was really going on because you knew they weren't going to attack you or if you treated them wrong, they weren't going to blast you? Or, so you kind of wondered, I could abuse this person and not really even know it because they're not going to fight back. It kind of made you check yourself a little more. Have you ever been with someone like that where you had to kind of check yourself? Because most people will let you know immediately when you've done something wrong to someone else or them. So they, they, they're kind of what you call your Norton. They are always scanning you for viruses, and they will detect what's there and make you aware, right? You, can, you don't even have to pay the prescription for the subscription for the next year because they just do it for free. It's their service to you. The Holy Spirit, he, he doesn't do that in relation to himself. Just like that person who just does not, just keeps laying their life down, doesn't take into account wrongs done, you know, just forgives 70 times 7, but does it in such a manner that it's truly gone and you don't even realize maybe. And you're like, dude, I, I have no clue how much I may have offended that person because I, they just don't let me know. They just go with Christ. Well, the Holy Spirit's like a gazillion times more that way. He is God. And um, so let's go back to that person. So if we were a roommate with that kind of a person, let's just pretend, we'd always be having to check ourselves because they're not doing it for us. In fact, we'd probably have to sit them down every couple days and say, what if I just want you to tell me? Would you please just tell me? What have I done? I want the Lord. I know you've forgiven me. I know you love me unconditionally. I need you to let me know ways that I have abused you so that I can get on my face and cry out to God and, and be conformed to his image so I can treat you right. And then maybe they'll tell you, and then you've got to pull out. I, I know, tell me the whole thing. Have you ever been around and said, tell me every, I need, I'm not looking to just, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to just do penance here. I'm looking to know exactly what it is so I can be right with God and man. I need you to tell me. This isn't a blame game. I want the Lord. And then they, they may tell you because you want to know for Christ's sake. You know, but there's, and you can tell even when they're telling you the last little itty bitty detail that you've pulled out of them, they're getting no satisfaction out of it. You know how the soul does? Oh, now you know just how much I've been dying for you, buddy. I'm really glad. I feel really good about this conversation. I've been waiting for this day. We're just sick, aren't we? We're sick. We're sick on the inside till Christ is formed. I don't know how the church world in, in large doesn't know that living with ourselves every day, how much we need the cross. You know, just a day in the life of Kelly from the inside would prove that we need Christ crucified and not just a salvation experience. But, but you, you pull that out, and they, there's nothing there. Well, how taking that practical example in just the natural realm, how much more so then would we have to sensitize ourselves towards the person of the Holy Spirit so that we would know when we were mistreating him, so that we'd be made aware and sensitized to how we can grieve him, how we can abuse him, how we can run right over the top of him and stop him from revealing Christ in ways that were be, would have been incredible to us if that broken thing in us, that pride had all of a sudden ran right over the top of it with our view, what we do know, the ministry that we are involved in, and, and just made him come serve that with us right now. You know, it, it's a pretty big thing. And God's dealing with me on that. And, and the scary, I want to use the word scary not to invoke fear in the negative sense, but the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom and is clean and, and does something in your heart to sensitize you to God, to honor God, to submit to God. Submit's a beautiful word, beautiful reality. Um, that we might humble ourselves 
before the Lord, before God. So, so that thing in us starts to rise or starts to push him out. We don't even, we don't even know. But we sense he's not there anymore like he was. And we sense he's still with us in the way we want him to be, but we sense he, that where he was taking us, he just he took a left turn because we gave him instruction to do so. And that where we were heading was deeper into Christ in a way we never knew and maybe never will now. And it's in those ways then that we, we begin to go, oh, Lord, uh, I, I have to break with this the reaction in me that is me. I, I have to humble myself. I have to, before the Lord, you know, you hew egg egg before the Lord. You, you humble yourself before the Lord. You're not trying to appease a teacher or a program. This, is, this happens only before God. And you, you do that and you say, this is what I say. I say it probably every day, maybe more than once. I am blind, and I'm not using it as a catchphrase to gain legal entrance into God helping me see. I mean, I'm saying it from my heart. Lord, you know I'm blind. You know I'm deaf. You know I'm broken on the inside. Read Psalm 51. I was born, I was conceived in sin. Lord, you know. Purge me with hyssop. What is hyssop? Oh, if we had an hour or two. But it's a spirit that says, I don't know, and I need you, and I'm on my face. I'm humble. I'm, I'm contrite. But I need what you have to say, Lord. And, and you know, there has been times, guys, when, when my soul has been raging, just going, I know that I know that I know that I'm right. I know that I know that I know that I see. I know that I know that I know that I hear. And, and I just have to divide my soul from my spirit and say, you are not allowed to be in charge. You can have your, your fit, but I am ignoring you. I'm not identifying with you. And in the power of the spirit, we're going to shut you up. But until then, I don't listen to you. I don't identify with you. I am going with my spirit, and my spirit that is joined to the spirit of God that has God's spirit, God's life in it, because I'm born again, is strengthened in its inner man by the spirit of Christ to go. I choose to receive your view against all of my pride, all of my know-it-all attitude, all of the convincing. I'm so convinced in my soul by the knowledge of good and evil that I'm right. But I know that I haven't seen what you're trying to show me, that you see more than I see, that you're trying to bring me into something that I've never been brought into, and that you need me to be with you before I can see it and believe even before I've seen, then wait to have it all proved out and spelled out to my mind so I can believe with my soul. But I trust in you, O oh God. I trust in you, O oh Holy Spirit. I submit to your view. I submit to your heart. I submit to you taking me where we want to go into Christ. I submit to the things you have seen and I haven't, the things that you know that I don't, the things that you live, places where you live that I don't, the things that you want to reveal that I have no clue about. And I rage against my own soul, and I rage against the knowledge of good and evil, and I rage against my own understanding, and I don't lean into it, and I don't identify with it, and I don't slap you in the face with it, and I don't step you down and make you my servant and my slave by it, and I don't get a haughty spirit over the things of God by it, and I don't shut my brothers and sisters out, and I don't carry myself in pride, but with humility, so that you won't be grieved so that you'll come real close and you'll whisper in my heart and you'll speak in my mind and my spirit the things that I haven't seen yet, the things that will help me to really know Jesus. And a man, I'll tell you, when you get to that place, you gotta, you got a war. You have to war against your own self. 
you have to war against your own mind. You have to war against that old carnal mind, that old carnal man, that old soul, that old pride. You have to be a bride. You have to be like that Rebecca Hart that says, I will reject father and mother. What's that? That's that old man way of thinking and seeing and living. I leave my father, my mother. I leave Haran. I leave who I used to be. I leave all of that to join with who Isaac is behind the veil that I haven't seen yet. And the only person I can really make that move with is the Holy Spirit because he's the only one who knows how to get to Isaac's tent. That you have to say, I will come. You know, when we studied Eliezer in chapter 3, it was kind of a romantic movie theme. You know, we just, we just kind of thought of Rebecca as this, I will come, a yes, get on my camel. And, you know, there is, we do say that, and those are, are those seasons where it feels like that. I will come, I'm, yes, Lord. But I'm telling you, that Rebecca spirit is a warrior. She is raging against her own origin. She is raging against her old DNA. She is raging against that old creation mentality, that old unrenewed soul. She is fighting against everything that's going to try to hold her back in her hand and keep her from Isaac. That's her family. That was her family that was doing that. That wasn't the devil. That wasn't the world. That was her family. Well, that family can represent all that is of the old creation in us, trying to hold us back from knowing the real Jesus, trying to hold us back from the Eliezer that can take us to him. And, and there we got to, because it's inside of us, that's where warfare be, is the hardest. You know, civil war. Many, many people have, in my life I've heard say, civil war is the worst of all wars because it's brother against brother. It's in the family. It's civil war. It's always easier to fight an enemy that's outside of you. You know, it's always easier to, to demarcate the line that that's the enemy, this is the us, and this is where we're going. But when it's civil war, it gets fuzzy because it's your soul and your spirit, your carnal mind and the mind of Christ trying to win in you, the old man and the man that you really are now because you're a new creation in Christ, right? And that's, that's harder. That's worse. you got to... There's a raging, there is a, there's a commitment to go against yourself in the name of Jesus for the sake of the Holy Spirit that you love that is, is incredible. I mean, it's warfare when it starts. It's warfare. I mean, you can be exhausted afterwards. You say, why am I so tired? Because I'm raging against my own soul, saying no, no. And the enemy gets in there, too. Because that old carnal mind is like a, you know, it just draws the enemy. They're of the same kind, flesh, darkness, selfishness. So, you know, you've got to rage against this, this, this thing that's trying to keep you from Jesus, this thing that's trying to break your relationship with the Holy Spirit by grieving him away. And you staying in that place where he feels comfortable invited, loved, received, a meek and contrite heart, an openness. Now, that doesn't mean you, you, what you know he's revealed of Christ in you, you let that go. No, but there's always more. That's true, and then more, right? And um, it's, a, it's a thing of relationship. I can't spell it out. You got to know him. You got to press in. Um, but but you, have to, you have to fight that thing. It happens with leadership. It's a similar principle where uh, God gives a, a leader, and this can be so perverted because now in, the, now in God it's not perverted because the Holy Spirit's completely God, pure, right? With leaders you're dealing with humans who are vessels that can be all messed up too, right? And we, we, we confuse that which is given of God, which all authority is of God, and the, the vessel, and then we, the lines get hazy. But there's a similar principle here. And that is that if God has deposited his authority in a vessel and that vessel sees an oversight over something, like the Holy Spirit is seeing Jesus, an overview of Christ that we don't have, the Spirit has. So let's just say a leader has that in a certain area. But we haven't seen that yet. We don't understand that yet. It hasn't flown down. 
So we want to rage against what we haven't seen by what we have. We want to rage against what could possibly be God. We want to rage against because of the knowledge of good and evil, we know more. And that gives us a license to slap God in the face, whether that be the Holy Spirit or his body. Now, that's heavy stuff, isn't it, guys? I mean, it's heavy stuff. What's the answer? You know, embracing the cross of our own death. Well, okay, that's just a term. What's the answer in that, that sentence? To me, it's just cultivating a heart condition that is teachable. And then, and then, because we can't do it, we can't even make ourselves teachable. It's not in our own hands to do, because we are what we are. Then turning to the Holy Spirit and saying, Holy Spirit, make me teachable. Soften me. Have you ever heard about the Spirit softening someone? Make me pliable. I want this, but I can't do it because I am the pride that I'm warring against. Soften me. Draw me. Speak to me. Breathe in me. And, and he begins to prepare us to enter into knowing Christ as his bride, as his body, as vessels of his life. He, he comes like Haggai did. We talked about a couple classes back with all these ointments and oils that soften us, remember, for six months in certain oils, and another six months before she went in, before Esther went in to see the king. He comes with these ointments. He comes with these things, not just to anoint us for the moment for a ministry need, but to soften us for eternity that we might be prepared for Christ to be revealed in us, that we might be prepared for the king as a bride that has his life formed in us, his nature, his kingdom, his spirit. So we say, Holy Spirit, be Haggai right? Soften me. I'm not adding to myself my own knowledge, my own spices, my own. I'm, I'm not wanting to add anything but what you have. You know what I need for the king. You know what will prepare me for him. You know the areas that I need to break and the areas that I need to be humbled and the areas that my heart is deceived and it can't get undeceived. You know what will bring me out of that and into a place where you can reveal the sun. Hey, guy, here I am totally reliant on what you have to get that bride ready for the groom, to get the church ready for the lamb. Release what's in your heart, all ointment and savor of the sun. Soften me, prepare me. You know, and then he comes and he does what we can't do. He prepares us for the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelationship that never ends. The oneness the relationship. And so at the end of the day, at the end of the Noah, at the end of the Eliezer, at the end of the Esther, at the end of the Haggai, we have what may be the simplest thing that we began with coming right back into the forefront, which is the relationship we have with the dove, with the spirit. We don't want to grieve him. We say dove because it speaks of his sensitive nature that can be easily, easily grieved away. And we don't give up, guys. What does that mean? Do you know how many times, if I'm any example, which I'm probably the worst, but how many times we're going to grieve him a day? How many times the pride is going to win? How, how that carnal mind can rage against what the Lord is trying to impart? Man, you got to get back up or back down, if you will, on your knees and, and uh, fight for that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Don't get discouraged. Look into the heart of Jesus. Look into the heart of the Spirit. Look into the heart of the great high priest. Look into the new covenant he made. Look into what's settled in, in heavenly places in Christ. Look into that eternal love wherewith he hath loved us. And get back on your face. Get, get back with the Holy Spirit. Cry out, pour out, seek, cultivate, sensitize. Let him soften you. Let him draw you. Let him speak to you then. Then just listen, right? Just listen. Wait. Yield. Prepare your heart. Gird up the loins of your mind. 
for the revelation of Christ. You know? Well, you're not going to have a girded and prepared mind that's full of what it already knows. You're going to have a mind that's like a bride, all soft and waiting to see the king that she hasn't seen before like Esther. And then Haggai's going to pick you up and take you right in there. Eliezer's going to bring you right to the tent. Come on in. See? Cultivating that relationship is a daily thing because of what we're coming out of in ourselves. And so, you know, I know that we're fixing some of us to uh, go on a retreat. Well, we all are in our spirits. We're all on a retreat. But let's just say that there was a time like some are about to experience where the Lord has really got some stuff he wants to share, right? The bin is full. He is ready to pour out the goodness, okay? But what if we enter into that time unprepared and the enemy's raging and our own wisdom is contradicting everything that's shared and then that broken mechanism keeps usurping the movement of the dove or pushing him into another area. And Well, we miss a lot of what could have been incredible because four months earlier and, and, there, and therein, we didn't take the time to cultivate a love relationship with the Spirit so that when the time came, we were ready. You do it every day. You don't just do it the day before. What, what can I do today, Lord? I'm not on the mission field right now. I'm not at the retreat right now. I'm not on a great escapade for you. I'm not preaching right now. I'm, yeah, but, but what you do in preparing your heart, what you do in cultivating that relationship with the Holy Spirit and warring against your soul and standing with the Lamb against yourself and humbling yourself before the knowledge of God and not grieving the Spirit but being open, that's, that's going to... That's gonna, that is your future. Don't you see that? That is the outreach. That is the ministry. That is your relationship with God. That is that moment. That, sec that moment, that prayer, that, de that decision, that choice, that defines your future. That is your future. Just like that one cell is a part of your whole body. That, that tells you what you're going to be about. How will I know what it's like in the future? How are you, what is it like today? What did you do with that? How did you treat him? Where was your heart? Where were your eyes? What was your reaction? It was bad, man. I raged against the lamb. I went with my own mind. I stepped on people's heads. I pressed right past his heart into my own view of Jesus. Good. You made a great step. You got real with yourself. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit right there. That is half the battle as far as I'm concerned because so many people justify their flesh. They never get to the point of being real about what they're doing to God and others. If, if you at least get there, you're half, half the way. Well, praise God. Now you see a little more what it, it really is. Now we can get with the Lord and say, look what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with what I'm justifying because he can't deal with lies. You, you know, I'm doing great. Well, he, what can, God, God's real. He's not like religious. Religion will deal with all of our why did sepulcher lies and then have a counseling session over and God, God knows what's up. He's real. He's real. He's completely real. So when we get real, we get God going. And he said, hey, you're right on now. Only God could have really shown you that. Well, praise the Lord, man. At least we're on the same page. That's a rare thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now, now that we're real about where I'm at, which is really, really heartbreaking, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's get together on this. Let's, let's start Let's start changing some of this stuff, the ways I treat the Holy Spirit, the way I approach the word, the way my heart responds to this in those secret inner chambers where Sanballat and Tobiah hide. I don't want to hide them. I want to expose them. I want to crucify them. I want to go right in the middle of my brethren, and I want to swing like Levi did until everyone who doesn't stand with the Lord, even my own brethren, fall. I want to be a priest. I want to be separate unto God. I want to be joined. That's what Levi means. Joined to God, not my flesh. Joined to God, not Haggai. Uh, Haggai, Haggai. Joined to God, not Saul. Joined to God. Well, 
I chose it that day, that moment, that attack from the enemy, that carnal thought that rose. I submitted it to God. I cast it down. I used spiritual weapons and not carnal ones. I believed the truth. I waited on the Lord. Man, your future is looking pretty good. Looks like the Lord might just be able to use you. Looks like that might be some kind of a retreat, some kind of a ministry, some kind of a relationship with the Lamb in the secret inner chambers of his heart and yours. Well, how can you tell? Was it, was it the way that I... No, it's the way you lived your life with him on the inside. It's the way in the hidden chambers of your heart you didn't hide flesh and pride. It's the way you didn't run over the top of him when you could have and no one ever would have known. It's the way you loved him. Spirit, soul, and body. Mind, soul, strength. With all your heart. All your soul. All your mind. All your strength. God said, that's what I'd have you do. Oh, would you want me to do my chore better? No. I'd like you to love me with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. You do that, you're going to be fine with your chore. Yeah, love the Lord thy God. Love him. Love him. Trust him. Let him be God. How about that? Let him be God. Instead of us, our views, our pride. Let him be God. Let him be the head of the body. Let him be your husband. Let him be your mind. Let him take you where you could never go. Let him reveal things you've never seen. Let him open your ear every day, day by day awakening your hearing, awakening your understanding like it speaks of in the prophets. Let him take you all the way to Calvary. Take you all the way to the real cross and not your false crosses. Take you all the way to the true kingdom and not the kingdoms of this world. <laughs> take you all the way in. Let him. Let him start. Let him kiss you with the kisses of his mouth, his words, his view, his spirit, his understanding. Let him. Let him. Quit trying to breathe all what you know into his face. Let, just let him. Let him speak. Let him sing. He, he's, you know what? He knows and you don't. Hallelujah for it. When you know, then you have a spirit of humility about that and openness for more. You and the dove are like best friends. You're like the little place where he has a nest you know the altars of God where the sparrows sleep? It speaks of in Psalm 84, I think. Well, you're like those altars where the dove nests. He can just go to sleep in your heart. He is not afraid of the sudden attack. It's just going to freak him out and make him run. We, we cultivate such a way through all the days of your life. You can look back and, and people say, what was great about your walk with God? And, and they're waiting for the great stories, the mission field or when I was baptized. And, and those are special. And, and amen, right? Totally. But even greater to you is that day where the enemy had you down for the count, man. You were just about gone. And your heart cried out, come, Lord Jesus, I reject the enemy's view and he's holding on because I have such a strong pride in this area I reject my pride it's crucified I embrace the lamb I embrace the Holy Spirit who's lifting up the lamb against everything that's in me the old creation me and I submit myself to God and I resist the devil and he will flee and I mean I rise up in victory you remember that day God remembered that day the devil remembers that day the kingdom of God came that day. You know, that's real. That's yours. That's God's. And, and oh, those grow from, from little battles to uh, persecutions to laying your lives down to up for others to continually honoring and loving and choosing and allowing God to be God in us, the Holy Spirit to be welcomed in us, Christ to have place in us, the Father to receive his Son through us in intimate and internal ways um, where the life of God is revealed, formed, and the power of his Spirit. That Now that, 
that's that's what your life is. What is life? What is Christianity? Well, Christianity to me is a culture made by humanity. So whatever to me. That's just Kelly. But what is this thing that Jesus had in his mind? Well, he said the kingdom of God is in you. What is it really all about? I just don't think it is about the outward. I, I think the outward is in place of manifestation for what's in. I think the real kingdom and the real thing that's going on is inside of you. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. No one gets to see it but the Father. No one gets to see it but God. That's the real thing. Cultivate that place. Fight for that place. Live from that place. Don't care about what men see. Don't be a people pleaser. Love God. Love man in his nature. Lay your life down. But live from within. Be a temple of the Holy Spirit. A habitation for the Son. And a sweet savor of Christ to the Father. And whatever manifests out here is God's doing. Whether that be life or death. Persecution or increase. Fruitfulness. That belongs to God and that's for others. But your life is in you. In relationship with God. Do you see that? It's your relation treasure it, protect it. The issues of life come from your heart. What did it say in the Proverbs? Guard your heart from within it are the issues of life. Don't let robbers come in and out. Don't let enemies ravage that place. Live from within. Live from within. Cultivate relationship with God there. Don't worry about what's happening outside of that. That's God's business. Take no thought of tomorrow, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, where you're going to live, how God's going to use you. Don't worry. Do you know that if you give your heart and mind to that, you'll lose your relationship with God, seeking to save some outward thing that belongs only to manifestation? Don't do it. If you live from within, you'll have so much life manifesting on the outside that you won't have enough places to, to give it. But it will only be the droppings from the table, the crumbs from that relationship where you live. I just feel the Lord's heart today, guys. This isn't just a class right now. This is the Spirit talking to you. Live from within. Don't let anything rob you of that. Don't let any ministry rob you of that. Don't let anybody's expectations of you rob you of that, including your own. You fight for your relationship with God. You protect it. You honor it. You love it. And if your own carnal mind says, well, you should be doing more ministry to look more godly and more special and more fruitful, who cares? You know what? The most fruitful ministry on the planet looked like a complete failure. Jesus dying on a tree. You're never going to win that battle. Beware when all men think good of you. You're probably off. This world has no clue what that kingdom looks like because it takes the spirit of God to discern it. So why would you want to appear before its eyes as successful? Appear before God's eyes in the image of his son, and that's going to come from living from within. You can fool the whole world and lose your soul. You can make everyone think you're the next greatest, hottest thing, and God says, I don't know you. Depart from me. We had nothing of the same spirit. There was no in. It was all out. Beware of these things. Redeem the time while there's time. Cultivate this every day. It doesn't come by assenting to it in a class. I, I agree. I concur. Yes, that's right. It doesn't matter. You can live contrary to whatever you believe. Your whole life you can live in denial of it and agree with it in your doctrine. You've got to be afraid of that. You know, stand before God. God, save me from my own beliefs. They're going to kill me. They're going to deceive me straight to hell if I let them go. They'll cover my flesh and make me feel okay. It's not okay to say I believe that and live contrary. It's not okay with me. It can't be okay with me. 
It drives the dove out of me. I'll never have Christ formed in me. It can't be okay. Yes, I know I'm saved by grace, but it can't be okay to say I really believe that and deny it every day. It can't be okay with me. It can't be okay in me. You have to fight every day. God made us frail in a beautiful way so that in our weakness we could press into his fullness. And in his fullness we could find the lamb as life. Use it. Use it. Use your weaknesses. Use your areas where the enemy gets you to press into God more. Thank you, Lord. I'm so off in this area. I'm so proud. I'm so caring about what people think. I'm so outward that I'm just going to have to press with all my heart to the inward. Thank you. It just makes me focus more on that area so I can know you for real and not be carried away by my own earthly sense of goodness or meditativeness or... You know, it's going to have to be God with me because it's contrary to everything that I am. So I'm going to have to know him for real and the power of the Spirit. It's going to have to be life, Christ, really, really Christ. This is great. Thank you for this bread. Thank you for this giant. Thank you for this broken thing in me that can't be fixed. It can only be Christ someday. And I won't stop till it is. You know, and, 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 well, what, what do we mean by cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit and preparing our heart? We mean, we mean this, guys. Not, not some, oh, I'm going to spend an hour each week feeling soft to the dove. I mean, come on. Look at what's in there. It's going to take more than that. But don't you know it? Don't you know that when we do that, we are confronted with stuff the next hour? And we just slap Jesus in the face. We just grieve the dove. We just don't give the Father his son. Shouldn't that break our hearts? Right? That can't be the answer. There's got to be more in us. And so I don't know where this is coming from. I think that I have been going through this in my heart. And I am determined not to let go. And I'm determined to make every attack, every weakness, every lack in me push me deeper in. I won't quit, not because I'm not a quitter, but because I got the Spirit of God in me, and he won't quit till he gets us to Isaac, us, till we all come. We fight for our brethren, too. I, well, what am I doing right now? Fighting for you. I'm not trying to tell you something. I need the Lord in this way, but we have to all come because we're his bride together. We're his body together. I can't just do this and then think I'm okay. We're one. We all have to come in. We all have to be this bread this body. We're his together. Like Jim shared on Sunday morning, we got to fight for each other. And so let's do this. Amen. Let's exhort one another while there's still time, while it's still called today. Let's not harden our hearts against sin and against the Holy Spirit. Let's not harden up. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. The great high priest has brought us in. We can have heart and conscience cleansed from sin. So Get it cleansed and then get on your knees and get him, right? But don't be pushed away from God by it. Do not let your failure, let your carnality, let your hardness, let your deception, let your pride, don't let it push you away. Use it to get closer. Amen. Use it to get closer. Don't say, I am such a wreck. I need to be real, like Kelly said, and I quit. No, no, no. That's not what I said. I said, you be real, and then you see how God's going to bring forth Christ in that because he's going to bring his son into that. The cross is coming. He's going to devastate that land. He's going to raise up a new creation out from the ash heap, and it will be Jesus, and it will be real. Hallelujah. Jesus doesn't destroy, destroy fantasy worlds in, in viral or, you know, uh, cyberspace, the fantasy of our justifications of who we are. He comes to real worlds. And he annihilates them by the cross. He did it once, and he brings it to bear. But if we're living in a false fantasy world, he can't destroy that. It's not real. If he sees that we're living in the reality that we need the Lord, he can devastate that world. That cross can come like an atomic bomb and end it, because it already did. And he can raise up from that ash heap where there's nothing left of our pride. He makes the high places low, amen? And then he makes the low places high. What does he do to your high, prideful places that are mountains that can't be moved? He makes them low in the power of the cross. And then he raises up a new creation. 
Let him. Let him. The cross conquered everything. If you believe in the cross, then you can let the Spirit expose anything and know that Christ is going to come forth because of what the cross did. I mean, if you really know that and believe that, you will see the glory of God. You will see the increase of Christ in the worst, darkest, defiled area of your person. You will see the glory of God. You will. Just hold on. Don't let go. Stay. Press in. Fight. Rage it. Rage the dying of the light. Hold on to the truth. Having done, I'll stand, but stand. Amen? Keep going. Keep going. The Lord isn't just teaching and doing. He's gathering a family in, a harvest in. He's bringing forth a bride. He's doing an eternal work in us. That's what it's all about. That's why we're here on earth. Yeah, that's why we have classes and church services. But we're, there's that thing that's going on in us. Forget the routine. Be faithful to assemble and gather. Yeah, but realize that the shadow land isn't what it's real. This, this thing God's doing in us is that's what's real. That's why we do these and gather these and have these. And Amen. So let's embrace it. Let's embrace him. Let's cultivate him. Let's love him. Let's know him. Let's grow in him. Let's go for him. Amen. I really don't know why I'm, I'm this way, but I just have to trust that by the grace of God, maybe some small part of it is from the Lord, and by the grace of the saints, y'all will forgive me for what's not, because I definitely, definitely deeply, deeply lack and need the Lord. And I always will, and I'll always have to deal with being such a wretched vessel with such a precious treasure. And I really, really appreciate y'all being able to receive from someone like me. Look past the vessel. Ask the Spirit to share Christ with whatever might be from God. He can speak through donkeys. And he can. I'm worse than that apart from Christ. But thank God for the Spirit. He's in us. And he knows Jesus. He's the one whom we want to hear from. He can speak in horrible circumstances through vessels that are just a mess. But if it's his voice, oh, the heavens open it's him and our heart is soft enough to hear and listen for the dove amen wherever he might speak so lord we just thank you for being who you are amazing person that you are amazingly selfless amazingly low amazingly tender and patient we do want to cultivate a relationship with you that you might give the bride to the son as one who knows him and receives him for who he really is, the, the him that only you know that we don't, but we will. We will. We will press on to know the Lord. So I thank you for each one who's gathered here, who's listening, who's watching, who loves you, who wants you, who needs you. Strengthen their faith. Strengthen their hearts. Strengthen their inner man and the spirit of Christ to press past their own darkness, their own pride, their own arrogancy, and know it all spirit to fall before your throne, to humble themselves before the spirit, and to just allow you to reveal Christ in us. Wash us with your blood, cleanse us from all sin, sins we're aware of and sins we're not aware of. Thank you that when it is cleansed and that it is cleansed, it is forgotten. It is gone as if it had never happened. And we stand on the ground of the risen sun, clean, crucified, and one in Christ. It is from this place that we listen, and it is from this place that we receive. And it is in his name that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. <laughs>